Hey guys, John from Grabbing Nebraska here. Today we're gonna to do some spare ribs. We're actually gonna end up with some St. Louis style ribs as well as some rib tips. Let me show you how we do that. First things first, when I pick out my spare ribs, really any ribs, any cut of meat, I like to look for some that have the fat striations running throughout. These look really, really good. Not a whole lot of prep work is gonna go into these. I'll probably pull the membrane, trim just a little bit of this fat off, and then we're gonna be ready to season. Let's get into this. Now, if I were just going straight to St. Louis cut, I would take off this flap. I would take off a lot of stuff here, but I'm not doing that today. Again, we're gonna save and do these, uh, uh, the rib tips a little bit further into this cook. So I am just gonna cut off some of this nasty stringiness. This stuff that's not gonna render down or do anything, it's gonna go. And then that membrane, paper towel can help you with that sometimes. A little bit more on here, a little bit gets left behind, that's okay. Got pretty lucky with this one, all came off pretty easy. And I do have two racks here, I'm just going to show you on one of them. That's pretty much it on this one, on that side. I'll trim a little bit of this stuff off. Again, there's really not too much that needs to come off here. And if you wanted to leave this stuff on, you definitely could. And that's just a little piece of fat there. I'll take that off too. That's it as far as trimming on these things. Let me show you how we season. I like to use a binder, use mustard, you can use mayo, you can use pretty much anything you want. You can use a little oil. Today I'm using a Cuban mustard, doesn't much matter. You can use regular yellow table mustard. Doesn't take much. Usually do the bottom side first since that's gonna be cooked uh, down on the grate. Doesn't matter if the, the rub looks a little ugly on that side, right? So we'll go ahead and Get that lathered up. As far as rubs go, we like to layer our flavors. First one, it's gonna be the chicks that smoke. This is an all-purpose rub. You don't necessarily have to use these exact rubs, obviously. Get yourself a good all-purpose rub. This one's got a little spice to it. We love that. Gonna be on there for a while, so don't be afraid to use some rub. Next, we got the Suckle Busters. This is their pecan rub. It's got a really nice savory flavor. And lastly, this is their competition barbecue rub. This stuff is great. And we're just gonna flip it over. And because we have that binder on there, we don't have to worry about the rub falling off. We'll do the same thing on this side. Hit it with the binder. Again, it don't take much. Same thing our all-purpose rub on the bottom. We've got our savory rub. And then that 
little finishing rub. Go a little bit lighter with that. This rack is ready for smoke. I'm gonna get this other rack prepped and we're gonna put them on. All right, I guess as I finish seasoning up this second rack, I could tell you a little bit about the process here. I'm doing these on a pellet grill today. It's gonna to be a Traeger Timberline 1300. I'm gonna run them at 275. That's gonna be for the first uh, two hours. Maybe a little bit longer, depending upon how the color looks after two hours. And then we will we'll go from there as far as breaking these down into the uh, rib tips and the St. Louis cut. But stay with us. This is going to be some good eating, y'all. Time for the smoke bath. All right guys, about an hour in, we're just gonna give them a little spritz. I'm using apple juice, lots of other options. Helps build that bark up a little bit. All right, so we're about two hours in. It's time to go ahead and get these things broken down and wrapped. First thing we're gonna do is cut down to St. Louis cut. Take a look at it. You can see these are the ribs. These are the St. Louis right here. We're just going to cut along here, right where the ribs meet, all the extra bones and cartilage and whatnot. Take all that off. That's the first step. The reason I like to cut it first, I mean to cook it first, is that it makes it a little bit easier to cut once it's been cooked a little bit. A little bit harder to cut all this stuff when, it, uh, when it's fresh and it hasn't been cooked at all. I'll go ahead and take this off and cut that up too. And then down here we've got little pieces. I'll go ahead and take that too. We'll save this piece for our rack. We'll set that aside. And then we'll get into this. This has a big bone right there that we probably won't be able to cut. So we'll go ahead and cut that piece off. Let's see if there's anything in there we can save a little bit there. Go ahead and cut that down. Try to get them as close to the same size as possible. It's not gonna be even because this is not obviously uh, a very even shaped piece of meat here. We're just gonna throw them all in our pan. I'm using a Cambro H pan. Uh, it's the half size. You can use a glass pan, whatever. Something you can put a lid on or put foil over because uh, we're gonna braise it or steam it a little bit after this. Let's keep breaking it down. And these make for a super tasty little treat. You can see the goodness in there. All right. Again, you can tell. If I had just pulled this out of the package, this would be a whole lot tougher to break down. We'll do the same thing with the other rack. Get this out of the way real quick. You could leave this on if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. I'm just taking it off. I'll try to cut this down, make them pretty even. And 
This has got a little, little bit of a sliver of a bone. I don't know if you can see it there. That'll definitely mess with our foil when we wrap it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and just discard that. There's our other little wreck. Obviously, if I were doing a competition, I would not do this because this is not gonna turn out to be the most beautiful St. Louis cut ribs you've ever seen, but they are gonna be delicious. And uh, generally speaking, it seems like you can get spare ribs at the same price or cheaper than buying St. Louis cut or baby backs, and you get so much more meat. You get these little rib tips that, that are basically free with purchase. So why not do it? Yeah, it's a little bit more work, but I don't know. I think it's fun, something to do different. All right, and just keep breaking this down. Just making long strips and then cubing them up. You can see it's just a little cartilage bone type stuff. I'm not gonna pretend to know all the technical terms for all this stuff. I just know how to cook it. All right. Once I got it all broken down, let me get this out of the way for just a second. And then for this, at this point, all I'm gonna do is add a little bit of apple juice, uh, maybe about half a cup, maybe a cup. And then a little bit of parquet, squeeze, don't call it butter, people get mad, uh, margarine. And get it open. There we go. We'll just squirt a little bit of that in there. And that's it. We'll put the lid on it. If you're not using the Cambro pan, throw some foil on it, whatever you got, put this back on. And then uh, in about an hour and a half, we'll mess with these a little bit more. Those will go back on. It's time to wrap our ribs. All right, more often than not, when I'm wrapping ribs, I'm using foil. Uh, when I say more often than not, that's like pretty much all the time. And uh, I'm almost always doubling up on my foil. I don't want to poke any holes. I want to uh, basically steam them. They've got the smoke that they want, the smoke that they need, the smoke that I want them to have. And at this point, I just want them to steam a little bit. So first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna add some of that squeeze butter we used with the rib tips. Put a little squirt of that down, just like so. Come in with some light brown sugar don't go too crazy if you want to add a little bit of your rabbit this time you can or some of your sauce i don't usually do that uh, and then we'll come in with the ribs Some people go meat side down, sometimes I do that too. More often than not, no, I'll go meat side up. Uh, I don't really wanna wash off all the seasoning that I've got on there. And then I'll come through, same thing on the top. A little more of that parquet. A little more brown sugar, real light. Again, you go too crazy with the sugar, it will scorch, especially if you're running on high temperatures. That's pretty much it. We get it partly wrapped here. Do a little boat action. There's different ways you can do this. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of that apple juice. Maybe just like a quarter of a cup to get it steaming until them juices get dripping. And I don't leave too much room for air in there. That's it. It's 
ready to go on. Let's do the other one. Same thing. Parquet. Brown sugar. Rack of ribs. The same on top. it easier than chasing the apple juice all over your table. That's it. Yeah, it made my foil a little long here, but that's okay. These are going to go back on. We're going to check on these in about an hour and a half. They should be pretty close to done by then. All right. That's it. Back on. Close it up. Still running at 275. All right, so they've been in there about an hour and a half. Now it's time to add the sauce and what that to it. We're gonna add a little bit more parquet. First thing I did was I add, took out a little bit of that juice. There was quite a bit in there. Get rid of some of that. I'm gonna add some more of the parquet in here. We're gonna add a little bit more of the brown sugar. We want these to candy up a little bit so we can add a little bit extra of that to the tips. Then for a sauce, we're gonna use Head Country Original. There we go. Healthy amount. And uh, for a little spice, the Apple Cherry Habanero from Texas Pepper Joey. And it does have a little spice, so I don't do, go too crazy with this one. Just a little bit. And we're just gonna work that in there a little bit. And this is gonna go back on for probably about another 30 minutes. And then these will be ready to snack on. These make such a delicious snack. And we won't need this lid anymore. When we put it back on there, we'll leave it uncovered for this part. It's gonna be good. Next, we're gonna get them ribs all sauced up and ready to go. All right, for our ribs, all I'm gonna do is open these up. And just create a little bit of a foil boat here. Just like that. <clears throat> We'll do the same thing on both. All right, and then for my rib sauce, basically I'll be using the Head Country Original and I'll be mixing it with the apple cherry habanero from uh, Texas pepper jelly. And it's probably about a, a two to one uh, of the barbecue sauce to the glaze. So I'll use basically what I got left here of the barbecue sauce. And then add some of that glaze in there on top. Adds a nice heat, a nice sweet. And it gives it, honestly, a fantastic shine. Uh, you can add honey to this. You can add some brown sugar to this, some hot sauce. There's lots of different things you can do to add to this glaze if you want to. And uh, you can throw it back on your pit if you want to, heat it up. Sometimes I'll do that today. I don't have time, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and glaze it up. And my kiddos love the sauce, so, uh, 
I'm not going to be chintzy with it. I'm going to put plenty of sauce on there before I put these back on. And again, these will probably go back on for about another 30 minutes to let this set up. And I absolutely, again, I, I love the color that this combination brings. Head Country makes uh, a killer color anyway, but when you mix it with that glaze, man, it's hard to beat. A lot of, uh, a lot of competition teams use a combination very similar to this. There we go. And we'll just use it all because because uh, we got it here, so why not use it? Let's set that aside. And these are going back on. 30 more minutes and it's going to be time to, to dig in, guys. Stick with me. done they've been resting just a little bit here uh, it's been another half an hour maybe 45 minutes so everything's set up the sauces look really good I don't know if you can see it here's a little trick for you a little trick for you that we use Put a little bit of your sauce or your glaze your juice down when you're getting ready to slice and then go meat side down when you go to slice, and that will help keep your uh, your sauce and everything intact and looking pretty. Also, I don't know if you could tell there when I grabbed those, that's kind of how you want them to feel when they're done. You want them to feel like they're gonna fall apart, but not quite fall apart. If they're falling apart, you overcooked them a little bit. That doesn't mean they won't be good. They're probably still gonna be really good, uh, but they're gonna be a little bit overcooked. Yeah, when you do them upside down like this, it makes it a little bit easier to see the bones. So you can get a, a little bit cleaner cut. Sometimes these bones on these ribs aren't always straight. And that makes it hard to get a good cut. Just look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Little smoke ring action. And if you want, when you're slicing them up, just dip the sides into your sauce on there. That'll keep it from drying out, oxidizing real quick. And you just set it to the side. You can move on to the next one. Do the same thing. Hit the sides with that glaze. Do the same thing. Just look at the color on that. Absolutely gorgeous. Like I was saying before, that pepper jelly combined with that sauce, really combined with just about any sauce, comes out pretty damn good. Let's see. I guess the next, uh, next thing we got to do here with these ribs is give them a taste test. Those are tender, juicy, delicious, sweet, a little spice. Gosh dang, those are good. You can just pull it off there if you want to. That's exactly how my family likes them. Now, for our rib tips, let's get into those real quick. Hmm? These are perfect little snack and morsels. These rib tips, tender, super flavorful, because there's a lot of fat in them. Uh, these are gonna make everybody at the party happy. And so many people just end up wasting them. Definitely don't waste them. Definitely try this recipe. 
so good. Y'all, subscribe, like, share this with a friend. If y'all make this recipe, let us know how you like it. Really appreciate you. And go check out the Grab and the Brisket podcast. See you. Subscribe, like, share this with a friend, and bye.